The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, squeezably soft host. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what do we have going on today? Well, we had some good earnings in the morning. Uh, pop the market up. We're about what, five, six points lower than the high of the day in the S&P. And of course, uh, probably the thing I'm looking at most closely today is the volume. We barely got 6 billion shares uh, total in the market yesterday. We got about 4 billion now. Um, so actually doing well or better, uh, but uh, we're going to need a lot more for these prices to stick. Still no signal that says uh, uh, anything out here would make you think that you wanted to short this market just yet. Uh, but again, any dip below a three by three or nine day moving average in the coming days for many of these stocks will form a very bearish pattern. Uh, and uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on it. Um, what else do we have? Eh, you want to take a look at uh, the usual suspects. The dollar's off uh, 23 cents today. Uh, when we get into uh, commodities, uh, after the bludgeoning of, uh, uh, where is it at here? Bludgeoning of uh, gold the other day. And, you know, we're up about a buck fifty, uh, twelve ninety four eighty. So there's not much going on there. Um, platinum's up three seventy. Silver's up eight, almost nine cents. Uh, copper's still under the huge uh, level of uh, psychology at three dollars. But you know what? It's getting awful close. Two dollars ninety four cents. Actually, two ninety four and a half. Is the last thing I show here in Dr. Copper. Above that $3 uh, level, a lot of people think that that means is a, a big psychological level of moving forward. When we go back into oil, the Baker Hughes numbers came out. We're still a little higher out here in oil. Uh, it takes a little bit for this winter-summer formulation uh, to roll through. We've got about 75% of all refineries back into full production still have I think 25% of uh, oil wells that were shut down for service and refineries still shut down. Those will come on probably this next week. Um, of course, the uh, Baker Hughes numbers will get buried in the vacation day a week from today. But uh, I think uh, come Sunday, you need to be taking a look at those and seeing uh, what those actual numbers show us. If we get another rise in there, I think we can make a pretty good indication that oil is topped out um, with the supply coming on uh, into the driving season. But you know what? Everybody's always getting new cars. They're a little bit better and fuel efficient. They're driving a little less. They're letting uh, Amazon do the driving for them, dropping stuff off the door, a lot less smaller trips. So that's, uh, that's kind of it. Uh, what else do we have out here? Eh, that's kind of it. We'll look at uh, a lot of stocks again, see how they're behaving today. Uh, kind of a mixed message. You got a little bit better index and in overall volume, but uh, still see a lot of stocks uh, that are hanging in there. Of course, Monday, uh, we're going to get into uh, a little bit more of the earnings. Uh, ta -ta -ta, da -da. And of course, uh, before the bell today, we had J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo, and PNC Bank Infosys. Well, maybe we'll take a look at those, but uh, all fairly uh, encouraging, at least for the most part. Uh, Monday, of course, uh, we get yet another round of Citigroup, Goldman Sachs. 
uh, and Charles Schwab. So uh, we'll see that. And I guess uh, after the bell on Monday, we get J.B. Hunt, but that's probably the only thing uh, that does much. Uh, Tuesday morning, we go back into Bank of America, United Health, uh, Johnson & Johnson, BlackRock, uh, Comerica, anything else out here? I think those are the biggies. Uh, after the bell on Tuesday, uh, Netflix and IBM. Uh, and, of course, uh, Friday, a, a, a vacation day, so options expiration on Thursday. Uh, but, yeah, um, so Tuesday night, Netflix, IBM, CSX, and United Continental. So we'll have a bit of the transports uh, on that uh, Tuesday. Then we get into Wednesday of next week, uh, more in the morning, Morgan Stanley, Abbott Labs, and eh, that's kind of it uh, Wednesday night, Alcoa, which really signals the onslaught of uh, the rest of earnings. So, but really kind of the way because of the vacation day, going to actually show that what we're really looking at is that 22nd of April really starting to fire up. Uh, when we come back from uh, our long vacation, we've got Halliburton reporting in that Monday morning. Uh, after the bell that Monday night, we've got Whirlpool. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. Western uh, uh, Alliance uh, Bank or I don't think that there's anything else more going on on that. Um, the 23rd uh, uh, in the morning, we've got Twitter and Verizon, Lockheed Martin, Coca-Cola, Procter and Gamble, uh, Harley Davidson, United Technologies, Celgene, JetBlue. ATI, Hasbro, Fitbit, uh, and that night, Snap, eBay, uh, iRobot, Texas Instruments, uh, Ameritrade, Six Flags, Edward Science, uh, Life Sciences, Stryker, Hawaiian Holdings. So again, the end of this month is really weighted once we get past it. Of course, uh, on the 24th in the morning, We've got Boeing, Caterpillar, AT&T, Domino's, Pizzas, Biogen, uh, SAP, Stanley, Black, and Decker. Uh, that night of uh, Wednesday, Facebook, Microsoft, Tesla, PayPal, Visa, uh, Chipotle, uh, Line Technologies, which has been quite a mover on earnings as of late, Lamb Research, Xilinx. So, like I said, it's uh, business is going to be picking up. We get into Thursday, the 25th, uh, Cleveland Cliffs, United Parcel, 3M, uh, Altria Group, uh, Alexon Pharmaceuticals, Nokia, uh, Southwest Airlines, and then that night of the Thursday, the 25th, Amazon, Intel, Starbucks, uh, Grubhub, Ford Motor Company, uh, Illumina. So, yeah, we get that for about the next three weeks. Uh, it'll be some action probably every night as we get in the first week of May. So it's going to be a lot. When we come back, we'll do a little history. We've got a lot of charts to look at. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Up uh, 17.8 on the S&P cash, up 250 on the Dow, NASDAQ up 33, and the Russell's up 4.7. Uh, again, uh, we'll be watching this volume. You know, ideally, you'd like a lot more going into a Friday, though. Maybe you don't get something. Monday, I think, is going to be exactly what we're looking at. Now, you can uh, make a case that we go up on very light volume into Thursday, which would be one of the most bearish signs that you could see. But we'll keep an eye on that. No prognostication yet. Uh, just a potential scenario. And uh, let's do a little history. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 19, 1981, NASA launches the first space shuttle mission, STS-1, sending the Columbia on its maiden voyage. The mission intended to prove the feasibility of space shuttles in specific and reusable spacecraft in general. Originally set to launch on April 10th, problems delayed the launch by two days, which caused the launch to occur exactly 20 years after Yuri Gagarin became the first man to fly in space. Of course, uh, we probably never, if the truth was known, we would have never had a space shuttle. Um, there was a giant argument uh, circa 1974, 1976, about what would happen. Um, the uh, Air Force said that they could develop their own rockets uh, and uh, do it for a eh, somewhere between three-eighths and a half of what the space shuttle program would cost. Uh, and that uh, basically they were uh, uh, had an economy with the truth when uh, it came to exactly how expensive the space shuttle program would be. Um, they did not uh, lie. The space shuttle was uh, why useful? Probably two to three times more expensive than actually putting up uh, regular rockets. We finally retired it and noticed no one is screaming for a space shuttle again. It did show uh, the level of our technology, which might have been one of the overwhelming issues. Uh, missiles and rockets continue to get cheaper. In fact, we'll talk about that with Tom O'Brien in the Tech Insider uh, segment at 3.30 today. And uh, a whole bunch of other stuff. In fact, I think the first segment is nothing about space, space, 
and more space this week in technology. All of it, science, technology, engineering, and, and math uh, all came together this week for one of the uh, biggest uh, confirmations of theory that goes back over 105 years. On this day in 1981, we've got the space shuttle. Probably, uh, if everybody said the truth, probably not a uh, something that we would have done again because of the cost. Far more expensive, or far more, or far cheaper, actually, to put things in space uh, with rockets still today. And in fact, uh, SpaceX doing very well in that. Uh, you can give me a call today at 877-927-6648. You can email me at path at tfnn.com, and that could be it. Dave, can you elaborate on exactly what a 3x3 three three displace moving average is and how to configure it? Uh, yes. Uh, Joe DiNapoli had, uh, was one of the first guys to actually use computers in trading. In fact, he uh, lived in Naples for a while. I think he lives now in Asia, probably in Hong Kong or Taiwan uh, or, uh, man, no, what was it? Uh, Philippines, maybe. Yeah. Uh, anyway, he used to live uh, here and uh, used to be on TFNN in the very early 2000s. Uh, he left to go over there thinking that uh, that's where the gold was. Probably didn't do too bad. Uh, one of the first guys to actually ever uh, try to use as a individual, not a, a big... Uh, house. Uh, he bought a CPM machine, one of those big boxy looking things from 1980 uh, with uh, 360 kilobyte floppy drives, put all his data on there and he started banging on it. Uh, what he wanted and what he worked out was taking, if you just want some kind of ballistic arc to see how the stock is performing over a handful of days, he, dis, uh, he dis designed a displaced moving average. So let's say we take uh, today. In fact, we can show this uh, on uh, timing the trade charts. Um, it's not too different from what a nine-day moving average is. I'm, I don't like the idea of everybody thinking about nine uh, moving averages. Uh, what I do like is having at least some kind of curve. Um, if you aim a uh, rifle at 45 degrees to the rise and pull the trigger and we had no air, you could pretty much predict uh, that that would be the farthest that you could shoot and uh, have the bullet land somewhere. So you know that ballistic arc. And uh, what we're really looking at in the three by three displaced moving average, in fact, you can see it here on the charts, is taking the last three days and moving that average out three days into the future. So what you're getting is kind of the a, a, a kind of a rough movement of these three days. So uh, if we look, uh, one of the things I like about it is it gives you the number for tomorrow today. So if we click on this, we'll find out that uh, in advanced auto parts, a close below 177.35 on Monday would break it. If we go to Tuesday, we go to 178.54, so we know that. And if we go out to Tuesday, we already know that 180.13 is the number it has to close above. So what it's doing is giving us that ballistic curve before we start heading back down lower. And as long as you stay above that line, generally the mo, Mr. Momentum, is with you. Anyway, you take three days. Uh, so in the case of Mondays, uh, you would have three days. And then you'd put those out three days. So today at the close, we already know what Wednesday's number is going to be. Because we took the three days and we put that out on Wednesday. The three days prior to today, Thursday, Wednesday, and Tuesday of this week, gets put out uh, on uh, Tuesday. And, of course, the three days before that uh, get put out on Monday. So take a three-day moving average and put it three days in the future and just run that along all the stocks and that gives you it. Now, um, it's not too different uh, from the traditional nine day moving average. Um, let's go back to here. Let's change that, that, let's change that to zero. 
and then we'll go ahead and zoom in on this. So here's the nine day. Uh, the nine day doesn't react as quite as well uh, to uh, movements, and that's why I kind of like that three day uh, displaced moving average. That's one, it moves a little faster. And secondly, uh, you know the numbers already ahead of time. You know the numbers for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday already at the close today that it has to actually continue to close above. So you can see when, as that line gets closer, either on the nine day or the three by three, but uh, displaced moving average. We'll talk more about it when we come back. Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. And, uh, you know, uh, so place moving averages are just that. Uh, but uh, some of the other ones that people use are the seven by five. So you take the last seven days and you move that number five days into the future. Or 25 by five, you take 25 days and five days into the future. Uh, I do this uh, a lot with the uh, sector oscillators in my newsletter each day, and that is uh, take a short-term, medium-term, and uh, longer-term uh, displaced moving average and figure out how many stocks are above 
and below that, and that's how those uh, sector oscillators are put together. So, uh, and like the Russell, I think there's like 1950, uh, 1950 stocks in it. So it kind of tells you a great deal about the momentum of the market uh, when you're getting up and down. And uh, those have been very good uh, for buying some lows. Um, gives you a great indication when everybody's ready to bail. Uh, anyway, displaced moving average. Take three days or take a number of days. Move that number uh, average in a few days. And if it closes above or below it, it's basically trying to measure the slope of either the upside or the downside of the movement. Uh, and there's various levels of it. But pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, somebody said, uh, yes, Joe DiNapoli's living in Thailand. I talked to him a few times um, when I developed the art of timing the trade charts and made uh, automatic ABCs and uh, the rest, which he had in his book. He told me it couldn't be done. And then I did it. And then, I don't know if he was mad or if he was just eh, whatever. But uh, I said, no, I could do that. And he said, eh, I don't think you can. I said, well, yes, <laughs> yes, you can actually, uh, statistically. And uh, eh, that's the kind of last time I talked to him. But uh, yeah, the art of timing the trade charts, which we might have a new version on Monday, depending on how much time I get on, on Sunday to finish it up. But I've been working on updating it all. We might even have some promotions and stuff for it uh, starting on Monday. Anyway, other things going on in the market uh to, to, we got the moving okay question about fire eye don't know just watching had a few swing trades earnings on the 30th uh and see what else do we have out here uh you know if any of these bills come through this sector is going to be pretty hot you've got a very nice consolidation um you know you want as long as you get less than three million shares you're okay you got 3.3 million shares yesterday. This is a company that's got excellent technology, and because uh, no one actually has responsibility, i.e., if they get hacked, nobody gets any less money in their paycheck. So the last thing that any of these big uh, 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 executives are doing is spending money on a lot of security, for the most part, not all. And uh, FireEye is preemptive security and uh and it's kind of tough for people in the ceo position to say you know I'm, I'm gonna spend money on this thing uh when it doesn't matter because no one blames me when we get hacked it's just uh everybody gets hacked uh but uh i've always said that this sector probably one of the biggest rockets of all time uh, if we go back to the 90s uh insurance companies started mandating that you had to have a working cctv camera in your fast stop because they were all getting robbed if you didn't put that in there then you weren't getting insurance if it wasn't working during the robbery you weren't getting paid and suddenly all the fast stops in fact i actually made a digital recorder uh, that uh, sold into the gas stations uh, that could uh, be uh, accessed remotely uh, that was all digital no vcrs or anything like that uh, called the digital detective I don't know if there are any pictures on the uh, internet of it yet, but it was uh, a lot of uh, technology that we worked out of uh, animation for television in Hollywood and uh, ended up selling that whole division to a company called Geyer, who was big into the VCR business uh, and made a lot of money for time-lapse VCRs for that same security purpose. Anyway, uh, those guys took like, off like a rocket as soon as insurance companies made them do it. Um, there are a few bills in the Senate that I'm watching. When those go through, uh, companies uh, like FireEyes, uh, CyberArk, uh, to a lesser extent, the gatekeepers like uh, Palo Alto Networks uh, are going to have a land office business. But uh, we've seen to this point that executives ignore spending money on security if they can help it. 
and they are no different than the people that own the convenience stores in the 1990. Okay. Uh, got a question uh, on UNH in the healthcare sector. UNH. United Health. Well, certainly breaking below the previous low. Uh, energy on the way down, not as bad as one would think with the break today. Uh, 215 bucks is the target on UNH. Probably take a little bit longer. Um, again, the cloud is uh, political over these companies. Uh, had a lot of them. Uh, in front of Congress this week, and it looks like at least there's some consensus between both sides of the aisle that they are going to probably uh, put the screws to both pharmaceuticals and uh, the health care providers, both. Let's take a look at Anthem, A-T-A-N-T-M. Uh, this used to be uh, hit, uh, run by a CEO that was uh, part of the Bush family, and they ran him out for some unknown reason that I can't figure other than the fact they didn't like him, or maybe he was a relative of the Bushes at one time. Um, quite an opinionated guy, uh, but certainly sharp as attack. He'll come back in some other company, and I, I think he's one of the better CEOs. They jacked up um, earnings for a little while, last six or nine months, I think, on a lot of bookkeeping uh, sleight of hand. And I think that a great deal of that's coming back to them in Anthem. But uh, certainly down to today on them was significant volume, 241, night 18. Uh, for that one, looks like the next test. And uh, with the kind of volume you've got, you might see 213.27. But again, uh, mostly the risk uh, is political in these as Congress mulls what to do about health care. Uh, but uh, there's a lot going on in there. Um, so far, the energy isn't that bad on the way down. So the, a lot of times uh, you get into uh, election years and it's the big shakedown, i.e. there's a bunch of things we can do to you. Wouldn't it be a shame? Suddenly a bill came through, Mr. Anthem, in United Healthcare. But you know what? If you had some political contributions, maybe these things would go away. Yeah, I don't know if that's it. But certainly, there's a lot of saber rattling in the Senate. We'll be back. 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 If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com. 
educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we're back. Uh, oh, we were looking at Anthem. Um, I don't know if there's a lot more to talk about it. Let's go through some of the other stocks that I'm looking at. We've been talking about for the last few days. Uh, advanced Auto Parts uh, getting back up into its previous uh, area where it needed about 1.8 million shares. Last few days, 1.1 million shares yesterday. 700,000 shares today. 600,000 shares as you went to a slightly higher high. Uh, AAXN, which is Axon Enterprises, hitting the 60, uh, high 62s uh, number of times, uh, hitting 62 today, looking for about 500,000 shares, uh, doing about half that at the moment. Uh, A Accordia Therapeutics, one of the few stocks out here trying to make a low. Um, I wish the energy on the way back from this January 7th, uh, January 11th high was a little lighter, but certainly as you broke through the December 21st low at $12.86, uh, 2 million shares yesterday, you broke through that with 581,000 shares. Today, just 238,000 shares. So there are some stocks out here that might be washed out in the near future. Let's take a look at some of these other ones. In fact, let's shorten the time frame up a little bit. Uh, what else do we have out here? Uh, AKRX, we talked about this one yesterday, uh, Acorn uh, dipped a little bit back into this 5 million share at 3.14159. God, I can't remember all the digits anymore. I used to be able to go to 20 on Pi. Anyway, $3.14, January 2nd with 5.4 uh, million shares. Uh, got into it with 1.6 million shares yesterday, uh, 1.6 so far today, but looks like it's closing back into that trading range again. So there may be something in Acorn to keep an eye on. Uh, AK Steel, um, kind of back, had some volume yesterday. Light today, no follow-up, 4.4 million shares today compared to the 17.5 million shares yesterday. ALXN, Alexion Pharmaceuticals, uh, did it go above its previous high? You needed 1.5 million shares. Uh, April 10th got 1 million shares. Did one of the biggest reversals that we've talked about in a while uh, yesterday. I mean, a very bearish candle, the, the dark cloud cover. Um, tried to open up a little higher this morning. It's closing lower. Uh, not a lot of uh, volume in that one today. Just uh, what do we have? About 500,000 shares. Uh, A-Ray, which is Accuray. Another one coming back to a possible buy. What you wanted to see is a whole lot less volume than the 3 million shares on the 23rd of January. Uh, and uh, you got it, 1.44 million shares yesterday. A little, uh, a little doji today with 3 point, uh, yeah, 300,000 so far, so not much. A little possible out there. The market breaks out. You've got some of these stocks saying that they've got some kind of low. 
Aero Electronics, which is really kind of bothersome for me, especially the SMHs, which we'll look at next. February 25th, $83.03, 630,000 shares. Breaking through it today with just 200,000 shares so far. Let's take and see how the SMHs are doing. Um... Go there. Um, you got a little bit, but no volume. Two days ago, six hundred and uh, yeah, six uh, million three hundred thousand. Yesterday, two uh, four point two million. Uh, today, just three million so far in the SMHs. So really starting to run out of gas. Got a. Uh, I don't know if it's a question or a statement. Uh, five. This is one that I went into. I couldn't find anything that I like to buy several times. Uh, and I continue to look at it. You certainly got the volume uh, up here in five below, which is kind of like a dollar store, except it's a $5 store. A little bit more. You got two dojis out here. <sighs> you got about the same volume you had at the previous high. Nothing really clear out here. This is where. You really need to see some kind of close back below a nine-day moving average. And so, you know, this is where I'm starting to think that maybe if we just go sideways or just slightly higher all the way to Thursday, that sets up the sell in the marketplace uh, and maybe a test of the highs of the market on light volume. But we'll have to see how that happens next few days. But if we get nothing but short squeezes in the next Thursday, uh, you could find me maybe short going into that three-day weekend. Three-day weekends uh, generally have a fairly decent change in the market. A lot of people uh, talk about the psychology, uh, psychological reasons why. Uh, but they do, especially as you get uh, closer to the summer, you get a lot of change in character and or direction on those three-day weekends. Uh, Boeing. A little pop out here today, as we talked about it yesterday, was testing uh, this big down day on the 11th of March that had 35 million shares. Got into it with 8 million shares on April 10th. Yesterday, he had a, kind of a little bit of a signal closing back into the trading range at 6.5 million shares. Today, up with 5.7 million shares. But again, uh, on the uh, for the ballistics of it, this is where you're going to have and run into some resistance uh, right here. Now, if you can close above that again on Monday, uh, you might have a shot to go back up to 400 bucks on Boeing. Uh, BSIG, which is Bright Sphere Investment Group. Don't know much about these guys. Eh, don't see much in the chart. Um, Grupo. Uh, Sandalier, Mexico, which is a bank. Um, nice, huge pop in this one today. Don't know if there's any peso issues going on. Take a look at CBS, uh, testing its previous high on lighter volume. That is the February 25th high, $51.94 with 2.5 million shares. Yesterday, eh, you got 2.6 million shares. Today, just 1.6 million shares, but you cannot hold that high. SECO, uh, C-E-C-O, Career -E Education. These secondary education companies have not fared well in the last 20 years, kind of boom and bust. Uh, 1.6 million shares on February 21st, $17.72 with 1.6 million shares. Got into that today with 374,000 shares. Even yesterday, just 400,000 shares. Uh, so that one may be tapping off. Capital Federal Financial, CFN, uh, another one of these banks uh, with fairly light volume going back into the January 3rd, 23rd? Yeah, 23rd high. Let's see what else out here. We've been talking about um, Cirrus Logic the last handful of days. We were looking for something in the way of 2.7 million shares, up today on 200,000 shares. Again, I'm seeing a lot of these stocks on very light volume. Um, be very careful of those. They don't say that the market's going to change tomorrow. They are going to tell you, though, the market is very brittle, like peanut brittle.
We'll be back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien. Ryan, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. The day looks like Microsoft. Is anything going on in it uh, other than? You know, you just watch the volume really kind of go down uh, since uh, you know, about the 22nd of March. There just hasn't been a lot of juice. Very thin today, yet another thin trading day, but just a slightly higher high. Um, again, these markets are fairly brittle, and with rare exception, few longs out there seem to have a lot of risk-reward uh, built in. They have a lot of risk, but not much reward. They also have probably a high probability of going slightly higher. Uh, but the question is, uh, you know, if you make a buck or two on one of these stocks 80% uh, of the time, but you lose $10 on it 20% of the time, what's your risk reward? And it's not good. And that is the problem now. So many of these stocks are testing previous highs on light volume. We've got some big volume, but it mostly comes from uh, people pushing around high-frequency trading systems and not the kind of volume where we see a lot of these stocks uh, blowing out new highs. Let's take a quick look at Apple at the same time and see if there's anything in that one for us today. Um, you know, it, we're, we're at 
kind of an extreme level of resistance in this market, and the volume is not really picking up. As we said uh, earlier in the show, a host of earnings coming in. So far, at least we've done okay. Uh, the question is whether or not they continue to be okay, and I think next week is really going to tell us that. But, um, you know, the most bearish thing wouldn't be a failure today. It would be light volume all the way up into next Thursday, even after we have some fairly good earnings. Um, we still may be waiting for some kind of big uh, message on trade, but maybe that rings the bell for a high for uh, maybe a while. Be back at 3.30 with Tom O'Brien. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you Monday. Same bat channel, same bat time.